we know how to find w perp once we have w. We now want to decompose our vector y in Rn in two components, one in w, we will call this component y hat, and one in w perp, we will call this component c. Both y hat and c have a nice geometrical interpretation as well. Call the point where y is pointing to the point p. Y hat points to the point in W which is closest to P, say P prime, and Z is the vector connecting P and P prime, which means that the length of Z will give us the distance from P to W. So both Y hat and Z are pretty useful. Let us see how we can find them. Suppose we have W given as some span u1 till uk in Rn, and let B be consisting of u1 to uk be an orthogonal basis. Then if I have a y in Rn, I can find the orthogonal projection of y as follows. y hat is, a is this horrendous formula over here, combination of a lot of terms. And then I know y equals y hat plus z, so z equals y minus y hat over here. So as soon as we have y hat, we can compute z immediately. Why is this formula true? We will look at it in two ways, a more geometrical way and a more algebraic way. First, the geometrical way. So what do we have? Let's take a small example with just u1 and u2. u1 on the x-axis, u2 on the y-axis and I have some y over here. Then I want to compute a projection y hat on the xy plane. Well, y hat consists of y hat 1 over here and y hat 2. So you can decompose y hat in two components, y hat 1 and y hat 2. But y hat 1 is just a projection of y on the line through u1, so we know how to compute y1. And y hat 2 is just a projection of y on the line through u2. We know how to compute y hat 2. y hat equals y hat 1 plus y hat 2. The projection on the line through u1 plus the projection on the line through u2. And that's just a formula over here with only two terms. So that's a geometrical idea. Let's, let's look at it more algebraically. So what do we need? We need y to be equal to y hat plus z. Well, that's satisfied immediately due to the choice over here. So that's OK. We need y hat to be in w. However, as we see, y hat is a combination of u1 till uk with some weights. So y hat is a linear combination of u1 to uk. So y hat is in the span of u1 to uk, but that's exactly w. So I had in W is also quite immediately clear that that's satisfied. The third one is a bit more tricky. Z has to be in W perp. That means that Z has to be orthogonal to U1 to UK. So we have to check that all those inner products are zero. Let's do it for U1. It goes the same for all the other ones. So we want to check Z in U1. What do we get? Well, we have z equals y minus y hat. Take the inner product with u1. We get y in u1 minus y hat in u1. We leave the y in u1 where it is. And well, we have to substitute this big formula for y hat. And then we compute all the inner products. But uk in u1, for example, equals 0 because we have an orthogonal basis. u2 in u1 also equals 0 because we have an orthogonal basis, and u3 in u1 equals 0 because, well, you guessed it, we have an orthogonal basis. So all terms over here drop out, except for the first one, where we get the y in u1 over u1 in u1 times u1 in u1. But then you see u1 in u1 over u1 in u1 is just the length of u1 squared divided by the length in u of u1 squared, that's the same. So we are left with y in u1 minus y in u1 equals 
zero. So indeed, z is orthogonal to u1. You can, of course, do the same for all the other ones, for u2 up to uk. So all those over here are satisfied, which means that at z is in w prep. And we see that all three conditions are satisfied. So now we know how to compute y hat and z.